I've arrived in Baku and it's uh, very pleasantly hot here, although there is a, a beautiful breeze that comes in off the Caspian Sea. Uh, the venue is great. Um, there's air conditioning there so the players don't, don't feel the heat. Um, but there's a really, really good atmosphere in the playing hall and uh, around seven, well, there was a lot going on. I suppose, you know, the big news was that uh, the USA crushed India and they go into the lead. But I'd like to take a look at one of the games from the England-China match. Now, I haven't spoken much about England so far. Um, they have uh, an interesting mix of uh, two, two of the older guys, Michael Adams and Nigel Short, and Garwin Jones and David Howell, the slightly younger generation, and Luke McShane as well. Um, so, you know, they, on paper, they have a pretty good team. They're an interesting mix, although in the last few Olympiads, they haven't really done very well. And facing China in round seven was a severe test for them. So let's take a look at the game between Li Chao and Nigel Short. Well, Nigel, of course, you know, former world title challenger and uh, very, very experienced. Um, he had a very difficult time on the chessboard in Tromsø two years ago. I think a lot of that was to do with his, I think he was distracted by the, the FIDE elections. Um, he's playing much better this time. Here, it's a very standard Nimzo Indian defense. You might remember that in round one, Carlsen faced um, knight e4 here, and then white uh, Carlsen castled. But short plays just castle, so a less committal way. And this is a very reliable defense. And, and short has played this particular variation uh, on, on several occasions in his career. Um, here, well, when white castles, you can either play c5, d5, or take on c3. But Li Chao played bishop d2, slightly more conservative approach. But it's also a pretty standard move, very good move, preventing the, the pawns from being doubled. Short played d5. 30 years ago, Vasily Smyslov uh, had this position with white against short, and Smyslov castled. But, well, after some accurate play in this position, Short managed to equalize without, without too much difficulty. But Li Chao played in a more testing way. He exchanged on d5 and castled. And then played with knight e5 and supported the knight with f4. So white gets this particular structure with supporting the knight on e5, and this is known as the, the Pillsbury attack, and this particular formation can arise, well, like here from the Nimzo Indian, uh, but very commonly from the Queen's Gambit as well. And it's extremely dangerous. Pillsbury, uh, the end of the 19th century, was known as a really fierce attacking player. And in, in supporting this knight on e5, then it gives white the chance to uh, attack on the king side using this fantastic bishop and of course the lines are open for the queen and sometimes the g-pawn comes into play maybe the rook swings up the board um, it's dangerous so how is black going to meet this well you could strike out straight away with c5 short played knight f8 just bolstering the king side for the moment and then he hit out with c5 this maneuver with the bishop, this is a very nice idea. So activating the bishop on this diagonal. And that's a little bit uncomfortable for black. So now black has a big choice. Um, do you exchange on d4? Or, uh, or you could hold the tension as well. Or do you push forward with c4? Now if you exchange on d4, you know, you might, for example, drop the bishop back to e7, but then maybe the queen comes out to f3. I mean, white can build up pretty nicely here, but black can try to 
hit the d-pawn. That's one source of counterplay. So this is one way of playing uh, for black. And, and also, you know, you might be able to land the knight into e4. Short decided instead of doing that to push on with c4, and this is a much more ambitious way of playing. And he pushed his b pawn. So now you can see he's got this very nice queenside pawn majority. But the downside of this is that it takes all the pressure away from d4. There's no pressure on d4, which means that white's knight on e5 is, is really secure. And black has to withstand a really brutal attack on his king. But it's a very ambitious way of playing for black. So g4, well, you know, why not g4? Because there's no pressure on the center. You can get away with hurling your kingside pawns forward. And now, you know, if black plays something like knight g6, then, I mean, the bishop can drop back, but, you know, you have to watch out for a, a very quick attack with f5. Um, so just giving that pawn on e3, but then white takes on g6. And this is already very problematic for black. You can see you know, these, these pieces on the queen side, you know, way out of... Um, such a long way from the king, whereas you know white's pieces, these bishops, rook, queen, this could be very nasty indeed. So already, you know, black has to be very careful here. Short steps out of the pin. This is wise, of course, and maintains protection of the knight on f6, g5 anyway. So white careers on. And the knight lands in the middle. Now, in playing the knight to e4 and exchanging often, it means that the d5 square has been vacated, and, and that's a nice idea. This is a beautiful bishop protecting sensitive square f7, but also uh, potentially looking at the queen side as well. So, very nice blockading piece on d5. Queen g2, but white builds up nicely, hitting the pawn on e4. Queen b7, protecting. And now white just carries on f5. I mean, this is, it looks really terrifying. I think, you know, at this point, um, yeah, not, not such a nice position for Nigel. And here I think Li Chao perhaps should have just pushed straight on with f6. Um, if the position closes with g6, then, well, you just nudge the bishop back, and then you could just ram the h-pawn up the board. Um, and if black takes, then, well, you could could be subtle and maybe just play rook f5 and bring the other rook over. Um, you could also perhaps just give a rook with rook f6. I mean, this looks absolutely terrifying. I'm really surprised that that uh, Li Chao didn't go for f6. Instead, he nudged the bishop back. Again, he could have played f6 here. Queen h3, this still looks absolutely terrifying. But short now blocked with f6 himself. I think it's an important move. Whether this is objectively good or bad, I think... You know, black has to do this. White carried on, I and mean, this is still absolutely terrifying. Um, because, you know, white is, is going to still switch his pieces to, to the king side. Here we go, next rook comes over. And short's counterplay on the queen side looks incredibly slow. Okay, he's brought the rook to c6 to defend the f6 point. But rook g2, it feels like there's a break coming. I mean, all white pieces massing for the attack now. But finally, short makes a breakthrough on the queen side. And now white has a big decision. Do you take? Do you, do you try to block with b3 and leave the pawn on c3? Well, Li Chao exchanged and played bishop h4. Still looks absolutely terrifying. Queen b6. And here is a moment where white could 
take on f6. So give two pieces for a rook and just take on h7 and just try to open lines. But probably black is okay there. Instead he took on h7 straight away. And short just bolstered g7. And here, well, my computer says that uh, taking the knight is a mistake, but obviously this is reaching absolutely critical moments and, and both players running short of time. I should say that around about here, short was kind of tapped on the, uh, tapped on the shoulders by the, um, the controller uh, and asked, there was a, a random uh, dope test. Um, you know, they wanted to check him for, um, you know, a, a phone or something. Uh, but, and, and, but this was when Short was approaching time pressure, and Short declined, um, and that led to trouble later on. But anyway, let's concentrate back on the game. Um, here, okay, my computer says that taking the knight is a big mistake. Obviously, this is reaching absolute climax of the game. Instead, it thinks that black should wait like this, but honestly, in practical terms, I think to allow this, this looks absolutely terrible for black. No matter what the computer says, uh, I'm not surprised that Short declined to play that. Instead, he took. Um, and now Li Chao took the rook. He probably should have played this move f6 again. Um, it seems like this, this is winning for white. For example, after taking. Now, of course, we would love to give a rook check here. Um, Bishop e4 is very, very strong for white, because if it takes, then you deliver checkmate. So the queen protects the pawn. I mean, there are lots of other variations, but this is, it, it does look very, very strong for white f6. Instead, whoops, I beg your pardon, let me just go back. Instead, after short has just taken on e5, Li Chao took on e7. Pawn takes rook, and this looks absolutely terrifying. But now, finally, uh, black's pieces kind of combine very well. Everything joins up now because the bishop not only counterattacks but also uh, defends on the king side as well. And if this is taken, then black's queen breaks through in, in the nick of time, and this is winning. And this bishop plays its part as well because after rook back, then three and this is deadly. So queen g4. Um, queen h5. And this is still very, very tricky. Here, short misses a big move. Bishop e3 check. And queen f6. Maybe this is the move he missed because um, suddenly out of the blue you know, black threat to make down here, and this should be winning for black. Instead, short played bishop e5, which looks very prudent, um, opens up this diagonal for the queen. But incredibly, if Li Chao had found queen e8, he should be able to draw this unbelievably. Um, there's a mad variation here. In this position, <laughs> okay, obviously white has some threats here, but in this position, Black can try king takes pawn, I mean, it's an incredible move. And if rook takes queen, then f2 followed by e3 is going to be winning for, for black. But instead, white holds on with this move, bishop c5, an amazing move. Just protecting the rook for the moment, and after f2, then white is just in time to give a perpetual check. I mean, a mad variation, but listen, this is time pressure. The players are not going to see these kind of moves. Instead, Li Chao played bishop c5 straight away, but now, uh, and he wants to give a check here if, if that bishop is taken. But queen h6, excellent move. And the players reach the time control here. Uh, but once the dust had settled, it was clear that Short has a winning position. He's safeguarded his king. And he's held his position together, and this queen is about to counterattack here. So the game finished like this. F2, excellent move. 
Very good move. Um, so short wants to, well, if this is taken, then the rook takes the bishop with check. And bishop c4 threatens f1. Queen f2 check, queen, uh, queen h2 check, and here the chow resigned. If rook g2, then rook f5 check. And that is going to finish the game off. The rook will drop. Brilliant um, counter-attacking game from Nigel Short, even though you know, he had a, a few anxious moments there, but you know, he held his nerve extremely well, and that helped England to defeat China by 3-1, an extraordinary result. And it's fantastic to see the old guys, Nigel Short and Michael Adams, scoring the wins in that match. You'll never win anything with kids. Um, we're set up today in round eight for a fantastic clash between the USA and Russia. USA lead with 13 points, and there are several teams, including Russia and England, on 12 points. And it's also Russia against the USA in the women's section as well. So watch out for our reports later.